So I think I found some competition for the 6,000 and 12,000 XP by EG4. This thing is cheaper and it has pretty much the same feature set. Now this company, SRNE, is not new. We've already reviewed pretty much all their other off-grid specific inverters, but something that was always missing was the breakers and also a PV disconnect. So people would buy those for super cheap and then add their own. But then they came out with this and it's pretty much a 6,000 XP clone. But instead of 6,000 watts, it does 6,500 watts. Next, the solar input is higher. The 6,000 XP can handle 8,000 watts, but this one can handle 10,000 watts, which means I can connect this to my solar carport, the entire thing with two strings and this can handle it. Where they're different is the larger model of this is rated for 10,000 watts. The 6,000 XP also has a larger model, but that one's rated for 12,000 watts. But these are a lot cheaper, so that changes things. Anyways, that's enough talking. Let's mount this on the wall and do some real load testing. And this is where we're gonna test it. So this is the bunker vault. And in the last six months, it's been powered by a 12,000 XP. And this building is non-insulated in Las Vegas. So this has handled over 100 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures for the last three months straight. And on the data log, there's no over temperature. These did have issues right when they came out, but the firmware update fixed all of them. So we're gonna to swap this out for the new SRNE and also on the other side of the shop I have another SRNE and this is the 10,000 watt model but notice how small it is and there are no breakers and there is no PV disconnect which makes the box a lot smaller and this is the 5,000 watt SRNE. For the money, it is hard to beat these. Even though we have this new one with all these breakers and disconnects, these things for the price are insane. And I hate how these are all relabeled. I just wanna see who the real manufacturer is on all of these products. So anyways, let's install the new one and see how it compares. I don't even remember wiring this, it's been so long. <laughs> I actually like the 12,000 XP for the size. I mean, it is more expensive, but this is a good unit. <laughs> it doesn't have knockout holes. They're just holes with grommets in it. I don't like that at all. Now most of the settings are just fine, but we do need to manually set the low voltage disconnect. So go to settings, set number eight to user so we can change the battery settings, and then change number 15 to 48 volts. This is too low and this will trigger a disconnect in your batteries. And it makes it much harder to restart your system if you go too low. So we're gonna set that to 48 and then exit. First thing we wanna test is the idle consumption. On the 6,000 XP, it's 50 watts. Really? 1.7 amps, that's pretty high. And that's at 52.5 volts. That's 89 watts, that's really bad. Probably the worst I've tested in a long time, wow. That's like a Voltronic. Let's test the other SRNE inverters. Whoops. And this one's pulling 1.7, 1 1.8 at 53 volts. But this is a 10,000 watt inverter, so that's pretty typical. This one's at 53.2. And this one is one amp for a 5,000 watt inverter. That again is typical. Why is the new one doing worse? Let's test it one more time. Zero the meter, nothing else connected. This is off, 1.7 amps, 1.8. Let's see if there's a power saving mode energy saving mode. But this shuts down the inverter if there's no loads attached. That's not what we want. Now it's holding at 1.9 amps. That's 99 watts at this voltage. That is a lot. It should be half that. So yeah, this is not a 6,000 XP clone. Now it's two amps. How high will it go? Double the idle consumption means you need more batteries and you need more solar. That actually adds up pretty quick. And their other inverters are better. They're just as good as the EG4, so I don't know why this one is so high. All right, moving on, let's test the surge. So now we're gonna try to run four air compressors at the same time. It will probably fail, but let's see what happens. So now we have our meter hooked up and we are recording and they're all switched on. 
That is actually insane. And the peak amperage recorded was around 130 amps. 31,000 watts, that's unbelievable. <laughs> So I tested it five more times and I'm getting the same numbers. I thought maybe I had all the compressors on one leg or I wasn't measuring correctly, but no, those results are correct. Which means in theory, this should be able to run my car lift on a single leg. That's the most strenuous surge test that I have. So let's run an extension cord outside and see if it can pull it off. So this is a 7,000 pound EV. We're gonna try to lift it with a single leg on this inverter. Nope. And this time it only pulled 45 amps, which is only 5,400 watts? What? It does not like this load at all. Let's try one more time. And we got the same results as last time. The peak is pretty much exactly the same. Let's try this on the 10,000 watt SRNE. Now 10,000 watt inverter by SRNE. Perfect. Try it one more time and it works. It's not that big of a surprise that a 10,000 watt inverter can run this load, but this has the same idle consumption as their new model. And this one without the breakers and the PV disconnect is around the same size. And these are pretty cheap. For the money, not that bad of a choice. For the final test, we're gonna do a continuous draw of 6,500 watts. And the fans are loud. So we should be able to pull 27 amps at 240 volts. And it's doing it. We're actually pulling 27 amps. It says overload. We're pulling 27.8 amps. That is over 6,500, so let's lower it. Now I lowered it to 26, and on the meter it shows 26.9, and the beeping went away. And also let's add solar, I forgot. Now we're charging with solar and we're still running the load. But the fan noise is about the same. It's pretty dang loud, I must admit. Now the car is at 100% state of charge and it passed the test. I ran it for almost three hours. So would I actually buy one of these? Probably not. Even though it has all these breakers and it looks really nice, I think the older budget models by SRNE are better for the money. I mean, you can get a 10,000 watt one, add a $30 PV disconnect, add a breaker if you want to the load output, and you're done. You really don't need this battery breaker because it has an internal fuse. Next, the idle consumption is worse than their older models. I don't know how they pulled this off, but it's 90 to 100 watts. And I'm assuming the larger output model is even higher. That's the worst we've ever tested in a long time. Next, it needs a neutral and a ground bar. I do not like these terminals over here. On the EG4s, they have a ground and a neutral bus bar in the bottom back of the case, and it makes the wire management really nice. On this one, you're gonna have to crisscross all of these wires. Like this generator will connect over here and then all the way over here. And then these loads connect right here and then all the way over here. So all of these wires coming through these three holes are gonna be crisscrossed, which makes it very messy very fast. So yeah, ground neutral bus bar in the back would fix all of these issues. Now the battery terminals I do like because they're screw terminals, unlike the EG4s where you have to shove it in the hole and then crank it down and then you have all those wire strands sticking out. I like lugs better. Now the surge capacity was fantastic with the air compressors and started up four and we hit 30 30,000 watts peak. But when I tried to run the car lift, it didn't move at all. And that was an imbalanced load. So it really struggles in that regard. And this thing is crazy loud. It sounds like a jet taking off. So I did not like that as well. So unfortunately, I wasn't a big fan of this model. I would rather get the older ones that have a lower idle consumption and more output for the money and then add my own PV disconnect for $30 than to buy this. I just don't see why I would buy this one. And if you have the money, the 12,000 XP is good, but it costs a lot of money now. And this is an SRNE, so these are super reliable. If you're trying to run air compressors on both lines at the same time, this might be the best option. But for everything else, 
I would not buy this. Now if they swap out the fans, get rid of the high idle consumption, and then add some real knockouts and change this and add the neutral ground bus bar, I think it would be pretty good. But yeah, that's a lot of stuff that they need to change. Anyways, I'll have links down below for all of these inverters. I hope you liked the video. And my favorite out of all of these is the SRNE 10,000 watt without the breakers. That thing is awesome. And I've been running it for like six months now. So yeah, check that thing out. Anyways, I hope you liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.